Easy Tigers. Hope everyone's fine and dandy on this Sunday evening. First things first, as always, I want to big up the Patreons, showing me love and support. It's thanks to you guys that I get to go out and see these places and give my opinion on what we find. So if you want to join the gang, or you like what I do, or anything like that, I'll leave the link in the description. And I just want to say a massive uh, appreciation of thanks in advance for that. So let's get stuck into it. So this this week I was in, in uh, Ramsgate checking out some old world stuff. Underground as always, because <laughs> I love a bit of old world underground. So yeah, we was in, was in, was in Ramsgate checking out the old scenery, the old harbour. Absolute beautiful place. Ancient seaside resort, just like any other ancient seaside resort it's been left to uh, go to poo basically they tend to be very poor areas these seaside towns Tartarian buildings left to dilapidate and fall to, to nothing I mean look at these buildings look at them high end Victorian as history goes. Anyway, we're not on about that. We want to look at the tunnels, we want to look at the underground network and the systems and the block work and all that stuff. So this is a tunnel network and this is where I entered. It was a guided tour, but I stayed behind and looked at my own bits. And these are the tunnels that we looked into. There was about three kilometers of tunnels, but we was allowed in one kilometer of it. Now the best place to start is the, the tunnel railway. So it says the tunnel railway was a two foot narrow gauge underground railway in Ramsgate, Kent in England. Following the restructuring of railway lines in Ramsgate in 1926, the section of line between Broadstairs and Ramsgate Harbour, including the tunnel to the seafront at Ramsgate, was abandoned. The narrow gauge tunnel railway was opened with, within the disused tunnels in 1936 to connect tourist attractions and shops near Ramsgate Harbour with the new railway line at Dumpton Park. The coastal resort and port town of Ramsgate was historically served by a complex network of unconnected railway lines. The legacy of competition between two rival companies to provide links to London and the neighbouring Margate. The town's first railway station, Ramsgate Town, was opened by the South Eastern Railway on the 13th of April, I wonder if it was a Friday, 1846, on what was then the outskirts of the town about a mile from the seafront. So it also goes to say, so we, by the way, I'm talking about a, a train track that runs between a tunnel from one end to the other end, from Broadstairs to Ramsgate. And what it's doing is, um, I've got to explore this tunnel and it actually branches off into like some subterranean network which we're going to explore. And just like uh, anything else, all these old world systems, they were already there before trains were invented. So the old world were using some sort of transport system that we're not aware of. But the bridges are there, the tunnels are there. Everything was there for it, but it's the same old story wherever you go. They got dug out for the war and they got used as air raid shelters. Same old story wherever you go. There was another station extremely close by and the only reason I'm bringing this one up is because it's not connected to what we're going to go and look at, but the block work around it, which is meant to be called cliffs, is phenomenal. So let's have a look. Ramsgate Harbour Railway Station was a railway station in Ramsgate in the Fannet district of Kent in England. It opened in 1863 as part of the Kent Coast Railway Company. It closed in 1926. Now look at the block work just behind the station shed. This is what we call cliffs. That's what the White Cliffs of Dover consist of. In fact, all of the south of the coast of England is like this. So is this a man-made addition to the United Kingdom? Why is there block work all the way round the south of England? Like, this is undeniable. I mean, you can look at it now and it might be questionable, but when you look at the older photos, they were really slacking, really, really slacking. I guess they didn't think they'd have people going through the pictures. But that block work there reminds me of this. See where it's flush at the top and where it's been defaced faced underneath. And again, flush and then defaced. So we're left with the block work that we call cliffs, i.e. the cliffs of Thanet, the white cliffs of Dover, but it's just block work, I'm telling you. And this video will show you undeniable proof of that. Like, like I'm saying, smooth, defaced, left and right. 
And again here you've got a nice right angle running down the centre of this part. This is cliffs by the way. And then you've got two smooth bits. And then you've got bits that have been defaced. And also you can also see some sort of concrete has been poured down these cliffs. Maybe to hide it and make it look natural, I don't know, but why would you do that? Now clearly it's been defaced because you've got the right angle there looking good. Just down the road in Margate, um, in Broadstairs, sorry, you've got this bit here. This is block work with, again, concrete down it. Now did nature do this itself without no tools? Did it lay itself? Did it pour the concrete down itself? Who done that? So just before we go into the tunnels, I wanted to show you the exterior block work because it's identical to inside and it's identical, like I said, a few times already. It's around the whole of the south coast of England or southeast, should I say. Now, this drone shot is going to show you how deep these cliffs go because above there you've got a two story building. You can fit that twice in this block work. Look at the blocks. Unbelievable, huh? Now the next shot is going to knock your socks off. Absolutely knock your socks off. Check this one out. See, the best thing about this drone, I can, I can actually get aerial shots that I wouldn't be able to get before. Now, like I said, this is, the, this is a man-made island, Fanny, I'm telling you. And I'm just flying the drone towards the corner bit of it, which is the bottom bit here, which I've just circled. But look, you can crystal clear see block work. Absolute crystal clear. Now, nature doesn't do that. If you go to university, look at that. This is what it reminds me of. If you go to university, they're going to teach you a load of cobblers. You're going to go, it's all natural, it's done, it took millions of years to form, but really, this is an old, ancient, macro structure. Macro means it's massive. And again, they've literally gone out of the way to cover up things, I say put block work in it, and then they've filled it with concrete. Now on the right hand side, you've got this geopolymer mix, which is going to be in a Brucey bonus, because that's a pattern stone, and I'm going to talk about that later. Here, here we have structural supports, which we call buttresses now this they normally go up the side of a wall to support the wall now this is clearly a wall like I said this is block work and a wall megalithic so it would make sense to have buttresses there and you can see the block work and it just reminds me of South American block work now when the blocks are all different sizes and look at the courses look at the courses of flint and look at the blocks You can see where some sort of service must have gone there. It can only have been a service. And you can see there's a tunnel entrance blocked up with concrete. Now, when I was in another part of it, Brawl Stairs, I took my drill down there and I took out one block. And behind the block was clay. Now, clay was used um, for waterproofing and for grounding, so no electrical charge could pass. But you can see how flush it is. Uh, block work. Now, let's go in the tunnels. It's identical inside. These tunnels are meant to be 170 years old, but I'm telling you now, they are older than that. Definitely older than that. Oh, the lovely little tour guide guy. Block work, can you see it? It's just... It's unbelievable. Like, you expect us to believe that nature did this. Nature laid blocks. I just find it very hard to believe. Like blocks, sorry I must say that a thousand times in this video, but it is literally about tunnels and blocks this video. So now at the moment we're at the entrance of the Ramsgate Tunnel, which was a bit served by apparently a steam engine and then an electric train. But it ceased in uh, 1926. Now I snuck behind a prop and when I was looking around there, I found this massive block on the floor. Look at the size of it. Now, if you're telling me this is not block work, then explain this to me, please. For some reason, they just leave some crumbs and bits and pieces. It's undeniable. And then I wanted to look, so under, this is where two blocks meet, one sitting on top of each other. You can see how flush it is underneath. So when did nature decide to go, right, this is the top of this block, and now we're going to do a new block, we're going to make a new one. When did nature decide to do that? And here, when did it decide to put a line of flint through it? A perfectly flush line of flint through the whole of the chalk. It's unbelievable. that like, you want us to believe that, it's natural. And another thing I noticed is all the tool marks. 
hopefully the camera picks it up but it was the same tool mark the same sort of blade which had like a three inch blade on it you can see it just went round someone's just literally shaving the walls shaving the walls look oh and it was done by hand the story about this is it was done by hand by a hundred men in world war two for air raid shelters so i'll just walk through the tunnels now i'll walk through this bit so you can just see the size of it and what the what what's left of it looks like now they put beds down here because they said there's going to have scouts stay down there and in my head I thought oh god that just don't sound good at all but now, now we're walking down this part of the tunnel so it's similar all the way around and it's the same as in Ramsgate uh, sorry Margate it's the same in Broadstairs it's the same as the Shell Grotto and it's the same as when I'm in Broadstairs when I was in Broadstairs I found some tunnels there and it's exactly the same so why has nature built an island out of blocks I'll, I'll go to that in a minute but now we're down another tunnel you can see how long these tunnels go and another interesting thing about these these actually went directly underneath the streets as well so what if these were used for services before or maybe a few resets ago Now this is where the tunnel would have continued up Boundary Road on its way round Ramsgate. And as you can see, we can't go any further, there's been a chalk fall. This occurred back in the 1950s when a water main burst near the surface and brought all that chalk down. The tunnel on the other side is still there. Okay. Some of our previous managers, with the help of the fire brigade, have been down the Cannon Road entrance and backtracked, but they needed the breathing apparatus to do it, because the air quality is not that good. People are often ask us, do we intend digging through? Yes, we could dig through, uh, support it and whatever, but uh, all you can see is more tunnels. <laughs> um, besides which, there's a possibility of ending up with another chalk form coming down, ending up with a big hole in the middle of the road. The council wouldn't be too, too happy with us. So we're leaving one alone. Now over to the left there, remember I mentioned earlier on about water tanks, that's one. So for me, this is the best part of the trip. Why? Because just behind that water tank, or just in front of that water tank, you can see a pillow with an arch. A pillow with an arch, sorry. And on there is some sort of old world render. Now, I've come across this so many times in Malta. And I'm going to show you now that this is old world render. Like I said, the guy here, they didn't want to go any further. They give you some cockamamie story that um, some rubble fell down and it blocked up the passageway. And then a couple of guys went down and had a look and they come back and said, no, there's no point in going down there. There's only tunnels. I mean, come on. So in my eyes, this is where the operation stopped. This is as far as the public can go. And after that will be what was there before the army went in and mashed it up. So this is a crumb that they left by accident. And I'm going to show you now. Look. Here you can see the same render, and by the way, I'm just going to point out this is geopolymer mix because it is poured in sections. Again, I'm going to point out more render left. These are crumbs that are left by people that have gone around to smash this place up. An electric went there, some service went there. Now, this is on Manuel Island, an island off of Malta. Now, check out the render. I want to know if this render had any special properties or something, or literally, it's just. It was just a cosmetic thing. But there you go, there's the render. All on the wall. See here, they've scratched up the walls, so the render adhered to it. I guess they might have done that underground when they applied the render there to that arch. But clearly it's just been left alone. So further on there is more tunnels that you're not allowed to go down. And it just goes to show that they're not really, they, these guys are just for profit. They don't really want to show you what's going on. Now here we have, I'll take you forward a moment for a group of time. Here's the steps leading to the surface. Um, but before we do, See this brick assembly here, quite solid. Every entrance had one of these. Do you know what it's for? 
So this is where it gets even more interesting because he takes us round to certain entrances that are blocked off above ground. Now, if you watch my channel, you might recognise this sort of scenario. This is in this is in Ramsgate still, but my sister's boyfriend is living in a place in Margate, and in Margate we went underground almost two levels underneath his house, which I'll compare for you right now. You may notice there's lots and lots of along around this way, a lot of brickwork. Mm -hmm. We puzzled at first what could this have been area could have been for. We thought at first maybe it been first aid post, we don't know. Right, me old mucker. Unfortunately, I couldn't open my mouth when I was down these tunnels because I don't want people to think I'm taking a mick or saying anything stupid. But this is identical to what I was in in my sister's boyfriend's house underground. Now, I believe a lot of houses on top of this megalithic structure that we call Thanet have access. Now, this is underground. This is a door going underground, but it's been blocked up. Right? I'm already underground, by the way. This is a mud flood area, so this really, in my eyes, would have been the front door. But we're underground. Now I'm going underground again. This was some sort of like coal shed. But like I said, this was in the basement of the house. And now I've gone through this door, I'm actually on the exterior of the property. So I'm directly underneath the road now. And then you've got this structure like it's a doorway. So this is very peculiar and it's all yellow brick and red brick under here as well. So let me just show you again. That's the house. Underground. A level and a half underground already. And this is the video if you want to check it out. And here we are outside the house underground. So I'm telling you, on the other side of that wall, like that tour guide was saying, is this sort of stuff. Now I've been on both sides of the wall now. I can clearly see. Now this is some sort of stone, that I, above that is going to be the road or the pavement. Because every now and then you can see like roots coming through. So, and these are services that are coming through, that's a, that's a gas pipe coming through there. So these old tunnels are using the services. And I want to know what sort of building was this, why is this bit been blocked off underground and why have we lost a level and a half of this building and why is there a door or window underground outside oh sorry underground look at that outside the building it don't make no sense to me now this is through the door now this is what I believe is on the other side where that tour go look at this is it so on the other side of that door is where I am now and I believe a lot of houses had this access to these subterranean networks. These tunnels. It's a little trough. But look, it's very strange. You can see like the arched brickwork and it's the same as the Ramsgate tunnels. I'm in Margate now, by the way. And there's the trough, which has been built into the wall so that tells me that the wall that's here is being a newer addition. Because these troughs are well old. This is lead pipe. This is extremely old. And if you look at the block work on the left hand side, that's the sort of stones that I found at Hadley Castle. So anyway, here's another one of these entrances. But on the other side, we're in the tunnels now looking at the other side. So behind that, I believe, would have been someone's house. Or maybe someone might have used it as an air raid shelter. And every now and then there's shafts. There was a lot of shafts in these places. I think there's um I think the guy said there's ten shafts, and here's one of them. But it's been lined with concrete now. Unless unless that was the render they used back then, but I doubt it, because they used a darker render. This more looks more like concrete. And how I tell the difference, you can't tell it here, but the concrete uses is a little bit lighter than the render they used back in the day. Now the whole of this Thanet island is completely man-made, the whole of it. And everywhere scattered on this island is a tourist attraction for caves or an air raid shelter or something like that. Like I said, it's sitting on top of like 
almost a 50 foot structure that we call cliffs, white cliffs. So what was going on there, right? How comes the southeast of England looks like block work? And then when you go inside what we call a cliff, what I'm calling block work, it looks like block work even more. Block work orange. See, this is Ramsgate. So the whole of this area. So I've just gone a couple of miles down the road and it's still the same. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share and help this video get shared around a lot. I'm just going to run through some old photos that I took. So I've took photos of photos and these were in the tunnels. So this one here is a guy and apparently this is when they were digging out the tunnels and they're using pneumatic drills. Now I'm telling you now they weren't digging these tunnels out. They were taking the render off and defacing it to make it look natural. That's why you see concrete poured down cliffs. That's why there's block work all over the beach. But I digress, I digress. And another thing is, how are they powering these pneumatic tools in a, in a cave that's like a mile long? Like, where's the power coming from? But anyway, again, in here, they were doing some final snags before they handed it over to uh, to be used as air raid shelters. Now, people actually lived in there. I think there's nearly a thousand people that lived in there after the war because people didn't want to go back to the world. They didn't want to go back to reality. And it was very interesting because when I was down there, they set up little homes. So it showed you what it looked like. People would get haircuts down there. Like they lived down there, people would have Christmas dinners down there. It was phenomenal. I'm thinking about making a video just on cave people because I found some documents where people married troglodytes and uh, it was a very interesting document. But anyway, let's have a Brucey. Let's spruce up for the Bruce. Now, anthropic rock is a rock that is made, modified and moved by humans. Concrete is the most widely known example of this. The new category has been proposed to recognise that man-made rocks are likely to last for long periods of Earth's future geological times and will be important in humanity's long-term future. Historically, anthropogenic Lithogenesis is a new event or process on Earth. For millennia, humans are dug out and built with only natural rock. Archaeologists during 1998 reported that artificial rock was made in ancient Mesopotamia. The ancient Romans developed and widely used concrete, much of it which is intact today. British Victorians were very familiar with the durable mock rock surface formations used in public parks constructed of pulamite and code stone. See, I'm so surprised that because uh, everyone's calling, like people are looking at something, right? They're looking at an object and going, oh, this is a petrified foot. This is a petrified. I'm so surprised people haven't called the Sphinx a petrified cat or, or Mount Rushmore petrified humans. I can't believe like people are doing that without even investigating anything. It gets even better. The US geologist James Ross Underwood Jr. advocated a fourth class of rocks to be added to Earth planetary material study, which would supplement geology's long identified igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic groups. His practical proposal for an anthropic rocks categorized recognized the pervading spread of humankind and its industrial products. So, man made rocks are real. Okay, and, and when you see structures that look like something, nine times out of ten, it's probably a geopolymer mix made by ancients to look like something. But anyway, James Pullman and Son was a firm of Victorian landscape gardening and terracotta manufacturers, which exhibited and won medals at London's Great Exhibition in 1851 and in 1862 International Exhibition. The firm was best known for their construction of rock gardens, follies and grottos using both natural stone and their own inventions. Pulamite, artificial rock, Pullman and Sons also manufactured a wide range of terracotta and Pullamite garden ornaments. Originally at their works in Tottenham, but after 1840 at Broxbourne in Hertfordshire, in 1895 the firm was granted a royal warrant by the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII, and some of their work survives in Sandringham House and Buckingham Palace. So this is some of their work, and we're just going to go through some pictures of other work that they've done as well. 
Let's, let's have a little look. Pulamite, which re usually looked like gritty sandstone, was used to join natural rocks together or craft to simulate natural stone features. It was so realistic that it fooled some geologists of the era. The recipe went to the grave with him. Modern analysis of surviving original pulamite have shown to be a blend of sand, Portland cement and clinker sculptured over a core of rubble and crushed bricks. Right, so basically what this guy's saying is that um, they didn't want to obviously tell you the recipe. He took it to his grave and that had been patterned. And it, it basically what he'd do is he'd it, it, make a mix and he'd put it over something. So he'd make a structure out of blocks and things and then he'd smear it over it to give it its life or its shape or whatever sculpture you're doing. See, it makes you wonder now because I've always said that these waterfalls and these parks don't seem natural at all. Now we've come across patterned artificial rock. I mean, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, mate, but I knew I was right. I knew it. And again, whenever you see waterfalls, there's always like a uh, block work going there. So I wonder if it's artificial. I'd love to get a modern day geologist and ask them about anthropic rock and see what they say because it seems like people only pick and choose what they want people to hear, you know, what fits their narrative. And you know, I'm not that guy, man, I'm just about truth. Like, I'm going to bring, like, you bring me a topic, I'm going to research it. And I don't care, really, not in a horrible way, whose toes I tread on, I just want to get to the truth. But anyway, this is, these are grottos. Look at these old world ancient grottos. But they're not. They're man-made rocks. And again, these are the guys with the rocks. You've got more rocks in Harlem, mate. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope I've shown you again something you haven't seen before. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and all that jazz. And don't forget, if you would like to support me, I'd be blessed. One love. Ta-da.